of questions about how we build our rocket stoves, how do they work. In this video, I'm gonna explain things that we do on our rocket stoves to make them more efficient, features that make them easier to use, reasons why we don't pay them. Let's get into it. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe. We are gonna be, we post a lot of videos just about day-to-day -day life in the shop. We have two options available. We have our four inch camping stove and we have our 16 inch patio stove. The difference between the two is really not much except for size. We can take these, this base on the camping model. You can break it down, put it into a container. Of course, the top will come off. The uh, fuel door will come off. The same can be done on the six inch models if you're gonna move them. The big uh, cross tops all come off and removable. Another feature in both of our models is our coal grate and our ash pan. When you're doing a long cook, a two, three hour cook, what will happen when a rocket stove is built with just pipe on pipe, that ash will start building up at the bottom. You lose the airflow that you need to keep the fire going like it's supposed to go. And the only way to clean that out is you have to take your pot off of the rocket stove and you have to scrape it out or you have to dump out all the ash and basically start over to keep going. You're in the middle of a cook, you wanna shut that fire down. The damper helps with that. You can close this damper down and knock your fire down. So if you're a little bit too hot on your pan or if you're grilling or whatever you're doing, you can knock the fire down. So on either the four inch or the six inch, we do have a grill top accessory. This grill is removable. This does allow you to, you could set a wok in here if you wanted to. All standard rocket stoves are gonna come with the standard cross top. This top will allow you to put pans on there. A lot of different options with the cross top. If anyone was gonna ask me, my favorite way to use the rocket stove, either four inch or six inch, I prefer just the standard cross top because I got access to different pans that I can use. The next common question is how do I light it? The easiest way to light our stoves is you're gonna, you're gonna pull your ash pan out. When you pull your ash pan out, you're gonna see your coal grate. When you fill this chamber up with wood, you'll, you'll put wood down into your fuel chamber. All your wood will be here. You can take a torch um, or a, a lighter and you can light the wood here. My favorite way is I'll put a little bit of a homemade fire starter right here in this ash pan. I'll light that fire starter and then I can just take it here, slide it in. I'll make sure my damper is all the way open and walk away. It's gonna light. Look, some key features. A lot of you are wanting to build them at home or you are building them at home. Um, you're sending me pictures and I think it's awesome. I think it's great. Some key features I think you should include in your builds. You want a damper. You definitely want a fuel door, a coal grate, a coal grate and an ash pan. Those three little things right there will make cooking on these things way more convenient. You've got way more air control. <laughs> when you have a really nice coal bed right here and you can just kind of, you could uh, manage the temp right here with this damper. Even in a situation where maybe the wind starts blowing from another direction, you have different options. You can turn, you can uh, close your damper and you can even crack your uh, ash pan. Sometimes, sometimes fuel door all the way open works great too. So that gives you a lot of op options to manage your rocket stove when you're cooking on it. And the ash pan allows it, when you start getting ash building up and you're gonna notice that the airflow isn't happening like it's supposed to, you can pull that out, dump the ash, and you don't have to stop anything that you're doing. You don't have to sit there and poke at it and stick at it. Just makes it a little more convenient for you. And if you're building one anyway, you can probably add these features. It's not terribly hard to do. The idea is just efficiency. You don't need a lot of wood to get a burner. I mean, a jet burner basically coming out of the top of this thing to heat up your pans, to heat up your grill tops. Another question we get all the time is, Jason, why do I need a rocket stove? Can I just have an open fire? Yes, absolutely. Are rocket stoves for everyone? No. The issue with an open fire is just efficiency. So in a situation, let's say you're an off-gridder, let's say you're homesteading, let's say you're camping. The idea behind this is you don't need to stop at the store to buy anything. You don't need to stop and buy charcoal. You don't need to stop and buy propane or you don't need electricity. Everything that you need is gonna be wood. That's maybe where you're at, the area you're in. For an example, this right here, these two logs, just dry oak wood, nice hard wood. 
I'll split these down, I'll quarter these right here, and I can get with that, those, these two quarters, I can cook a single pot meal on that cast iron. The big question I get all the time is why aren't you painting or powder coating the rocket stoves? Because years ago when I was selling these, the biggest complaint we would get is that the paint would fail right here in this area. So we went into it, we checked it all out, we've tried to figure out why isn't a high temp paint holding up in this area. And we learn it's not the paint that's failing. What happens is this tube, even the 3 16 tube, 3 16 tube, when it's heating, will expand and contract, expand and contract. So after about 10, 15 uses of this rocket stove, the, crack, the paint will start to crack in these areas here where the most heat is at. Obviously, if the paint cracks, uh, you get moisture behind them, you end up with a big rust spot right here. That big rust spot makes it look terrible because you got paint that'll stick here and here and up here with a big old rust spot. What's the option? How's, how do you fix that? Well, you take a wire brush, you clean it up real good and you repaint it. And then it just happens over again and over again. That's why we stopped painting them. We felt it was a better option to leave them plain steel and a guy can just wipe them down with oil. Use this thing a couple times, add some, add some more oil to it. It'll prevent the rust from happening. You'll get a nice cast iron patina. It's gonna work out better in the long run for you. That's just my little tidbit on everything. We post a lot of videos just about day-to-day -day life in the shop. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe.